These days, with everything going on in the world, compromising a business supply chain is a key goal for cyber attackers. By gaining access to a company that provides software or services to many other companies in the supply chain, it's possible to find a potential way into thousands of targets at once. And taking down even one can cause disastrous results. This is The Digital Prepper, and today I'm going to be talking about this developing issue with supply chain attacks, how it's affecting us, and what you can do now to prepare. Before we get started, I just want to remind you guys that if you do like the video and want to discuss anything regarding digital preparedness or just preparedness in general, be sure to help get this video out to more potential preppers by leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing to see more like this. With that being said, let's get started. So what's happening right now? Well, there have been several major incidents during the past 12 months that have demonstrated the large-scale consequences supply chain attacks can have. One of the most recent attacks, the global Petya cyber attack, disrupted the systems of the shipping company FedEx, and as well as the world's largest container ship and supply vessel operator, Marisk. Other cyber attackers working for the Russian Foreign Intelligence Service compromised updates from IT services provider SolarWinds that were downloaded by 18,000 customers, with those attackers going on to target around 100 of those customers, which include several US government agencies. Now, most of these attacks have only been identified because they've been on such a large scale, but there are means of supply chain compromise that are far less likely to draw attention, but can be very effective. These lower scale, less obvious supply chain attacks can be just as effective for cyber attackers, which would provide them discrete pathways into certain companies' networks. And as I spoke about before with the Lazarus attacks, these bad actors that can compromise the software development pipeline, that businesses like oil pipelines, water treatment facilities, and even nuclear facilities can add malicious code to the software that was built and deployed by that pipeline. They can access any secrets used by that pipeline and potentially gain access to other source code repositories and environments. Now, normally, I would ask you to think about how this is affecting us now. With that being said, I think you guys understand that these cyber attacks on these large scale businesses have the ability to affect our critical infrastructure. If not, let me explain now. Critical infrastructure like power generation and distribution, or even things like water treatment and oil pipelines are becoming more complex and reliant on networks of connected devices. Nowadays, they are far more interconnected, both in terms of geography and across certain sectors. Our energy sector is one of the main targets of cyber attacks against critical infrastructure, but it's not the only one. Transport, public sector services, telecommunications, and critical manufacturing industries are also vulnerable. For example, in 2013, Iranian hackers breached the Bowman Avenue Dam in New York and gained control of the floodgates. This could have resulted in an overflow that could have damaged a large area, but luckily during that cyber attack, the dam's gate had actually been manually taken offline for routine maintenance. Unfortunately, these major systems are a vulnerable and, right now, a poorly protected element of cybersecurity. While our IT infrastructure has given rise to a myriad of things like cybersecurity consultants, products, and services, these industrial control systems are honestly not very well protected. Now, since he's been in office, the Biden administration has stated that they are urging the private industry, which controls much of our national infrastructure, to harden their cyber defenses, and they have taken some steps to strengthen the national cybersecurity posture, but more needs to happen to keep these systems that we depend on safe and secure. 
So now that you're armed with the knowledge to understand how these cyber attacks are affecting the supply chain, what can you do now to stay prepared? Well, like I mentioned, the damage on these critical infrastructures that are caused by these cyber attacks, whose control is carried out through computers and network systems, is a large scale thing. Cyber attacks can directly or indirectly affect companies, institutions, and organizations economically and cause great financial losses, which in turn can affect us as well. For example, our food supply goes through a multi-step process to keep food and other items in stores. A cyber attack on any of the supply, manufacturing, or distribution chains can affect the amount of supplies that are in stores. How you can start preparing today is to get into hobbies like canning or gardening in order to one, make sure that you can have long-term storage of your food, as well as possibly being able to have your own food to be self-sustaining. You should also work on having your financial preparedness as well by doing things like paying off debts and having savings if possible. Getting these things in order, starting with your financial preparedness, then with food, should be one of your main priorities. As over the past 12 months, research actually shows that 89% of electricity, oil and gas, and manufacturing firms have experienced cyber attacks impacting production and energy supply. 40% of those could not even block the attack, and 48% of them didn't even make improvements after being attacked. Keep that in mind. To wrap things up, as I've mentioned before, all of this just shows that cyber attacks on critical infrastructure will continue to grow in number and frequency and continue to escalate in severity. As the world becomes more reliant on these technical systems that are connected to the internet, the attack surface for these malicious actors expands. These cyber attacks are becoming automated and more anonymized and may become more grand in nature. The best way to be prepared for these attacks is to be proactive in your preparedness plans. Be sure that you have all of the supplies that you need like food, water, power, and medical supplies to be able to be well off even if an attack on part of the critical infrastructure causes long-term issues. Check out the description below for videos where I talk about specific cyber attacks in more detail, ways to keep your prepper inventory organized, as well as a solar power bank that you may want to include in your preparedness plans. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to get more videos like this that will help you with your digital preparedness. If you have any ideas for more videos or just want to share your experiences with prepping, please leave a comment down below. Stay safe, stay prepared, more digital prepping to come.